Okay, so hello everyone. Uh, my name is Jessica and I work at the Career Development Center at Purchase. And I'm just here to introduce Amy Lutz. Um, she is a graduate intern with us at the Career Development Center and she's getting her master's in industrial and organizational psychology at Iona College. But she is also um, a hiring manager um, and is, I'm gonna turn it over to her as she's gonna talk to you about interviewing in 2021. So. Take it away, Amy. Hi, everyone. Like Jess said, my name's Amy, and I'm here to talk about interviewing in 2021. So I am a hiring manager in my current position. I, I am also in the position of um, graduations approaching for me. So I have started applying to other positions and going on interviews myself. So I'm going to share with you everything I've learned from both sides and kind of, you know, how the market is right now and what they're looking for and how to position yourself to be the best candidate in these interviews. So let's get started. So before the interview, you really, there's a few things you want to do to prepare. So first and foremost, you want to research the company. You want to walk into this interview knowing a little bit about the background of the company. You want to take a few minutes to Google the company, uh, know what they do, look up recent news articles, see what's going on, if there's any recent headlines. So, you know, they will be impressed if you walk in and you can cite recent events in their company. Um, it'll show that you really took the time and you're taking this position very seriously and you're invested and you're interested. So uh, the second thing you're gonna wanna do is review the job description. So this is super important. Um, you wanna go line by line through each point for the job description and see how your qualifications match that. So maybe you ne didn't have a position with the exact title, but a lot of the skills that you did at any other position can transcend to this one. So you really wanna try to link in and talk about the similarities between what they're looking for with this position and your background and what you have done, whether it's in school, it could have even been in high school, it could have been an internship, it could have been you know, a part-time job working at Dunkin' Donuts, no matter what it is, I'm sure you could find ways to link it to the job description. So you really wanna focus on that. Uh, the third thing you're going to want to do is practice responses. So you don't want to walk into an interview without having practiced some of these responses. You don't want to kind of get hit with a question and be like, hmm, I never really thought about that. And it's going to take you a minute or two to formulate your response. You want to be ready, Google online, interview questions, and just practice what you'll say so it comes really naturally and organic when it comes time to respond to these questions. You don't want to get nervous and put on the spot and just say anything that comes to your mind. You want to kind of have an idea of hmm, when they ask this, I'm going to bring up this topic. Um, so you're going to want to also limit distractions. So the biggest thing that I see when I'm doing an interview that's a red flag to me is when the person has their phone on them and they're looking at it or they're texting or let's say, you know, when I walk up to them while they're waiting for me, they're looking at their phone and texting. Even that alone, it just gives me a bad feeling that this is the kind of behavior that you'll have on the actual job. And you're gonna be a person who tends to hang out on your phone when no one's around. Um, so that's really the last thing that you, you know, the last impression you wanna make. So I would suggest just putting your phone in your pocket, having it on silent, maybe leaving it in the car, whatever you need to do to control yourself from looking at the phone. It's just really, you don't wanna have that, you know, be your first impression. Uh, be on time. So this is super important. This is your first impression, this interview, and they're going to judge you on it. So if you are late to the first interview, that is a huge red flag. That's that's an issue for me. Um, I'm going to think that, you know, you don't take this seriously, that maybe you don't take lateness seriously, and this will be a chronic issue. So especially for the interview, you always want to be on time, of course, but for the interview, especially you want to be a little early. So if you are doing a remote interview on the computer, you want to sign in about five minutes prior to your actual time. And if it's in person, I would suggest anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes early, uh, just in case you never know what's going to happen. You may have to park the car. Maybe you got to find where the suite is. Maybe you're going to get lost. Who knows? Just try to get there a little bit early and just be very patient. Um, just understand that they make their schedule a certain way for a reason. So if you're at one o'clock and you come in at 1245, just expect to make, wait that 15 minutes, you know, um, 
and last and least, uh, test the internet connection. So this is super important. You don't want to find out at the beginning of your interview that your internet connection is not working. So if you are doing a remote interview, you need to test these things all out the day of to make sure it's nice and smooth, there's no issues. So really just try to anticipate any issues that can arise and fix it before the actual interview because that'll really throw a wrench in the whole interview. Um, like I said, the interview probably has a schedule right now um, and they, they may not have an extra 15 minutes away for you to get your internet connection up and running. So just be very mindful of that. All right, remote interview tips. So right now, remote interviews are hot. They're very popular right now um, due to the pandemic where you know now everything's kind of switched to online. So this is a new territory for many of us. So there's a lot of new tips that will arise as we get more into this. So first of all, you always wanna turn your camera on. So you never wanna go into an interview with your camera off. You want the interviewee to see you, that you want them to you know get to know who you are, uh, see your facial expressions. If I had an interview with someone with a camera off I would be like okay this is a little weird I feel like I don't really know the person I'm interviewing you know uh, uh, second of all you want to dress the part so you do want to dress as if you are in the current position so whatever that may be you want to just wear whatever is appropriate for the position that you are applying for so I'm not saying you have to wear a suit and tie if the position doesn't call for that but if it does call for that and you're going for uh, finance or banking or what have you you do want to dress that part and if it's a position that's a little more casual you could dress a little more casual but I would still try to you know business casual um, or more uh, okay, prepare your background for the interview. So if you are doing a remote interview, you want to make sure your background, there's no clutter there. It's not a high traffic area. You're not going to have kids and, you know, dogs in the background and things going on. Um, you want to be in a nice quiet room. You want to have a nice, pretty plain background, very neat. Uh, you know, if you don't have that, you can't find a spot like that in your house, people do kind of put their back up against a wall. Um, you can do that, but I would say that's like a last resort. I'd rather have a little space behind you as long as it's declu decluttered and pretty and ready to go. Um, so that also goes with choose your spot wisely with no distractions. So make sure the TV's off, make sure your cell phone's on silent, make sure there's uh, everyone in your household knows you're going on an interview right now and you're asking them to be quiet. You know, I know there's sometimes where like maybe we don't share with our family that we're doing something important on Zoom and they don't know. And next thing you know, you're going to knock, knock, knock on the door or they're opening it or they're loud or whatever. Just make sure everybody's on the same page in your household and it's going to be nice and quiet for that half hour period or whatever it may be that you need to really focus on this interview and make an amazing first impression. So you do want to make eye contact. So um, yes, even through the computer, you want to make eye contact. It makes you come off as a more genuine person. Um, you know, you want to make a connection with the person who's interviewing you. You want to show them all the great things about yourself. And you definitely don't want to be looking down on the floor the whole time or looking to the side the whole time. You know, it, you just want to look them, look the camera in the eye. Let's say like that. Pretend it's their actual eye, but it's the camera and just look straight towards it. Um, you do want to have a hard copy of your resume ready. And you also want to note a notepad and pen. So you should have these things on you physically hard copies. Um, don't just rely on what's ever on your computer because you don't know if you can pull it up at the moment or what's going on since you're already utilizing the computer for this interview. So having a hard copy is better. Having a pen and paper to take notes. They're not going to share everything on the job posting. That's a great thing about the interview is they're going to share additional details with you that they can't just fit in that little posting. So you know, you definitely want to take notes. You definitely want to show the, the person that you are taking notes that you are very interested in this position. You're taking it very seriously. You want to learn more. It's, it'll be a very good sign if you're, you know, taking notes, asking questions, writing things down. Okay, how to stand out. So right now, it is an extremely competitive job market. Um, a lot of people have been out the past year due to the pandemic, and they're looking to get back into the work field. And so all these positions have a lot of applicants. So you really need to stand out. You need to shine right now. You need to bring your A game to these interviews. So a few ways that you can stand out with the competition is you want to show that you understand the company and the position. So this is like I said earlier, you really want to invest your time in looking up the company. You want to go through every single bullet point in the job listing. You want to know it like the back of your hand. You want to be ready to relate 
these bullet points to your background and your interests and your history and everything about you. So you don't want them to mention anything on the job listing. And then your response is, oh, I don't know what that is, or you know, that you can't talk about. Even things that maybe you're not familiar with, you've never done before, look it up, find out what it is. If you don't understand what they're asking for, just look up the whole thing and then you could talk about it. They ask you if you have experience and you can say, I don't have experience exactly, but I am aware of this system. I, I do, I have watched some videos on how it works. I understand the concept and I'm sure I could pick up on it very quickly. So you make sure you, know, you can talk about these different things. Um, so you wanna to come to the interview with well-researched questions. So one thing for me, um, at the end of the interview, I always give them a chance. I'm like, okay, like, uh, you know, it's your turn. You have any questions, comments, concerns, anything you want to ask me about the position? And the people will say, mm, no, not really. You know, that's another thing. I'm like, huh, okay. So there's no way that it, a person who is genuinely interested in a position, that, that they don't have any questions. That there should be a bunch of questions, you know? Questions show that you're interested. Questions show that you're listening to what I say and everything I'm saying, you're thinking of other questions. It just shows that you're engaged, you're interested, you're taking this seriously. And I can expect you to be that same individual. If I do give you the position, you're gonna be, you know, ready to go, paying attention, thinking outside the box, thinking about things I haven't mentioned. Um, there's always gonna be things not mentioned that you should be asking about. So please never have the response of, no, I don't have any questions. Always think of a few questions and, and ask them. Um, and the last point is show that you're self-motivated. Yeah, I mean, that kind of goes along with the other two points. It's just showing that you're, you're not gonna wait for someone to tell you what to do, you're gonna do it. So that has to go with the, you know, it's going above and beyond. It's, it's researching the company, it's knowing what they need. It's, it's, under, it's listening to every single word this person's saying to you and thinking of additional questions. It's understanding, it's comprehending, it's thinking outside the box. Um, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for somebody who's not going to wait to be told what to do. They're just going to do it. They're going to take matters into their own hand. They're going to care. They're going to care about this position and this company like it's their company. You know, you got to treat it like it's your business and you got to really be invested and that's what they want to see. Okay, so formulating responses. So when you're responding to questions, there are some methods you could use to go about uh, formulating your responses. So one really cool one is the STAR technique. So it's effectively like telling a short, concise story with the beginning, middle, and end. And so it consists of S-T-A-R. So S is situation. So describe the situation or event that you were in. T is task. Explain the task that you had to complete or work on. A is action. Describe the specific actions you took to complete the task and our results. End with speaking to the results or the impact of your efforts. I promise you, if you use this STAR technique, you're going to kill these questions. They're, you're going to give them exactly what they're looking for and more. Um, so just remember that the result or outcome is the most important part. It should have a positive outcome that can either be a successful result or a practical lesson you learn for next time, which is a great point. You know, I like to ask questions of, you know, not all positive, what did you do? But I would like to say, hey, what, tell me about your roughest day on the job in your last position. Can you tell me what happened? Or tell me about a time, you know, an opportunity for you, a time that you wish you did something better. So it's important that we show that we are learning from our mistakes. We're all human. None of us are per perfect, but you definitely want to be able to describe a time where you wish you did something better. Um, people like on interviews, I'll be asked, what is your greatest opportunity? What do you wish that you did better? And uh, you know, one of my responses is I tend to be a perfectionist, which I do. So I can get wrapped up in certain things. Certain things could take longer for me than they should. So I'm really working on kind of, you know, calming down, like slowing it down and not focusing so hard on the little details. So, you know, things, responses like that show that you are human, that you are learning from your mistakes, you know your opportunities, you know you're not perfect and you're willing to get better because we're all evolving constantly, you have to. And in just job market, you're gonna be constantly evolving. So they wanna see that you can change, you can, you're able to self-analyze and figure out that your areas of opportunity and work on them. So it's a really great thing to have. So for this portion, I'm going to go through three uh, common um, example questions and responses. Feel free to write in the chat um, what you think that should be included in your response to any of these questions, um, or even just you know speak up. There's only a few of us, so feel free to interrupt at any moment. So the first question is, describe a situation in which you led a team. 
So for this, you want to outline the situation, your role, and the task of the group overall. You want to describe any problems which arose and how they were tackled. Say what the result was and what you learned from it. So, uh, you know, this is a really good one. I, people are always looking for leadership. They're looking for, you know, you to be able to work in a team. So this is your chance to shine. And this can go for anything. Like I said, it could be, uh, you know, um, a group project that you had in a class. You could talk about that. You could talk about any, any position you had. They just want to know with this question that you are able to work with others. You are able to come together and, you know, divvy up like different parts of um, jobs so you can all come together and be better together. So they want to make sure you're not someone who just has to work alone, that you can work in a team. Teamwork's super important, especially these days. Um, you know, it's very common to work in teams. So you definitely want to show that you get along with others and you know how to, you know, participate together. So the next question is, what has been your greatest achievement? Okay, that's a big one. That's a loaded question right there. Um, <laughs> this is why you have to practice beforehand because if you just get hit on the spot with this question and you have put no thought into it, I mean, I'm, I don't even know where to begin if I haven't thought about this. So uh, you want to recite academic or obvious work. So you can do those. Those are, but you know, you don't have to necessarily go that route. Um, they won't distinguish you from the crowd. So instead, you want to say something that will set you apart, that speaks about your aspirations and your values. So you know, it doesn't necessarily have to be about a, you know a grade or anything. You could say, you know, my greatest achievement is. You know, if you're a parent, you could talk about your child. Um, you could talk about a, a club that you created, an environmental club you created in your school when there was none because you were very passionate about that. And it's something that you feel is super important. And you found, you know, great satisfaction from knowing that you're the person who led that whole idea and you inspired others to care more about the environment. You know, that's kind of what they're looking for. So, um, and then last but not least. Can, we, can I ask a quick question? Yes. So, so would you say with the achievement, like it could be, you know, it's so it could really be that personal, like meaning like for some of great achievement is that there was a class like they never thought that became so hard. They never thought they can pass and they like passed it and got through it. Like, um, like because achievement sometimes is and it's a question that's is asked a lot, but sometimes it's like a loaded word. So do you feel like just for people like not to be scared by it and like achievement is like in whatever you see as an achievement it is yeah it's unique for every individual I think it could be a passion whatever really gives you fulfillment that's how I would say like achievement whatever really made you feel good inside about completing something and that could be completing a very difficult course that you just thought there was no way that you could ever wrap your head around it you've never been good at math you know going into this it's math and you're not going to do well and then you killed it you got an A so that's that's an achievement to you uh you know that may not be the same achievement to the other person who has been good at math their whole life you know so it's going to be really unique for every individual, but it's definitely something that, you know, you're passionate about and it really just made you feel good inside. I'd say that's an achievement. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Thank you, Jess. All right. So the next question is, how do you cope in adversity? All right. So this is a clever question that opens up further conversation. Whatever you choose to talk about, employers will be looking at your coping mechanisms and how robust you are. Did you learn for it, from it and build the experience for the future? Yeah. So this is one of those questions that it's asking you about a difficult time. And you have to be prepared to answer these questions because they're not all going to be positive questions. It, there's going to be some like, how did you deal with a bad situation? And you want to definitely be able to talk about it. Like one thing for me, I have a lot of interviews and I like to ask a lot about the previous job. I like to find out why you were no longer with your previous job. And some people don't really want to talk about it. Maybe they got fired. So they're not very clear and specific. But, you know, I like to kind of dig in and then, you know, it kind of people tell me, oh, you know, I didn't like the people I worked with. OK. And then I'm like, OK, well, what does that mean? Um, you know, what does it mean? You didn't like the people. What didn't you like about the people? Um, you know, you want to be very specific. So you don't want to say things like that. Uh, 
how do you cope in adversity? You don't be like, well, you know, I didn't like my last boss, so I wound up quitting. I just couldn't deal with them anymore. So that's like a not well thought out response. So, you, you know, this is exactly what we mean with adversity. So please just focus on not all the positives, but the negatives and how you're going to explain them and how you're going to say that you overcame them. And you just, you know, and even if you lo- you leave a job, it doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. Like you can explain how you went about it and you can explain all the reasoning why and all the, the ways you went out, you went to this man you went to that manager you tried to solve a problem you know if you're telling me all that I'm not going to hold it against you for up and quitting from a job it's all just how you explain it and your reasoning so yeah okay so here's some questions to ask uh, the person interviewing you because like I said you definitely want to have questions at the end so here's some ideas for you if you can't think of any other ones um so how will you measure the success of the person in this position when you ask me that I'm kind of blown away. I'm like, wow, like, okay, so you're planning on getting this position and you want to, you want to go above and beyond. You want to be good at this job. You don't want to just be mediocre and just have this position. You're already thinking about, hey, how do I be the best at this position? So I love this question. Um, I think it's super important for any position out there. And you definitely want to have an idea of what they're looking for. Um, So can you describe a typical day or week in the job? That's great. That, That will really paint a realistic picture of what you can expect with this position? Um, I love that question. Um, Things are going to be brought up that, like I said earlier, they're not mentioned in the actual listing. So this will be a great way to paint the proper picture for you of what the work environment will be, what your days will look like. And it'll give the interviewer like the idea that you really take this very seriously and you're very interested and you're thinking from all different angles. Um, The next question is, what are you hoping this person will accomplish in their first six months and in their first year? Again, this is very similar to the first question. This is thinking long term. This means you are in it long term. Uh, you know, nobody really wants to hire someone who they think is going to leave after a month or two. You know, that's called a turnover. So no company wants a high turnover rate. Um, turnover is the most expensive part of a corporation. Like you, they invest all their money in training. So every single organization is interested in keeping their employees long-term. That is vital to the survival of the organization. So when you ask a question like this about six months and first year periods, you're it's showing me that you're planning on staying. You're not a job hopper. You're not looking for just staying here for the summer and leaving. So I like that. I appreciate that. And I will definitely consider that when I'm thinking about if I'm going to give you this position or someone else. And the last question is, how would you describe the culture here? What type of people tend to really thrive here and what type don't do as well? So every single organization has their own culture and their own set of values. So, um, you know, one company is going to value fun. Like there's some companies, they say their most important thing is having fun, you know, which seems a little like a little funny, but um, it's true. And, you know, it's it creates an amazing environment where people are all happy. And then the customers or the guests see that, they're happy to in turn, they're happy and they're having a good time. So, you know, every culture has a unique, um, you know, culture. So you definitely want to understand what they're looking for in their employees. What kind of person are they looking for? Are they looking for someone who's super outgoing? Are they looking for someone who gets along well with others? Are they looking for people who are always thinking of new ideas and they're very creative? Uh, Whatever it is, you definitely want to understand that and know, um, you know, then, then you could decide if you're a fit for that company as well. Okay, some things to avoid during an interview. Uh, So one thing I've noticed is when people come in and, you know, they see that I'm very nice, but so maybe they'll start getting a little too comfortable with me and acting a little too casual with me. So the first one says acting too familiar with the interviewer, remain professional all the time. So please don't get, you know, fooled by the the interviewer is very, if they're friendly and nice like me, you know, they're, they're bubbly, they're happy, they're energetic, they want to talk. Don't take that as, you know, they're, oh, this is like my friend, you know, I can relax, I can be comfortable, oh, I can curse, I could speak casually, I could be open and honest about things maybe that I shouldn't be sharing, um, because, you know, you don't want to fall into that. This is still a position, it's a professional environment, you want to remain professional at all times, and you want, you want, you don't want to be too comfortable, you want to be sitting up straight, you want to be thinking carefully about every single word that you say, you want to be watching your body language, just please don't get too comfortable. Um, so chewing gum during the interview, I mean, I think this is pretty obvious, but it still happens. Um, 
please make sure that you are not chewing gum during the interview. It's just, it's rude. It's, you know, it's just unsightly. It's not a good thing to do. It will never look good for you. There's never a case where that will be beneficial for you. So please do not do it. Um, one more thing I didn't write in here, but if you were doing an in-person uh, interview, please make sure that you are wearing your mask properly. Uh, there is nothing worse than when I'm doing an interview and someone's sitting there and they have their mask pulled down to talk to me, or maybe they're not covering their nose and it's just their mouth. And I have to interrupt them and say, I'm so sorry, do you mind just covering your nose with a mask? It's just, it's kind of awkward. It's something that I don't feel like I should have to say. So please just, you know, just know that that's, that's the standard right now in our current environment, that's the expectation. And I don't want to coach you during an interview to pull up your mask because that makes me feel like if I do hire you, you're going to be sitting, you know, if no one's around to coach you, are you going to have your mask down? Am I going to have to micromanage you and follow you around and ask you to pull up your mask? I don't want to do that. Um, Okay, so interrupting the interview while they are talking. Yeah, you definitely don't wanna do that. It's just rude. You wanna allow them to speak, uh, to get out whatever they're saying. Um, I'm sure they'll give you time to respond. Um, just, just if you have a thought that pops up while they're speaking, allow them to finish. And you can say, hey, I just, to go back to the point that you were making a little earlier, just to add on to that, I wanna share you know, X, Y, and Z, whatever it may be. Just allow the interviewer to, to finish their statement. Um, so you don't wanna ask about the salary and benefits at the first interview unless prompted. So this is one of those weird things that it can be considered rude. You kind of wanna wait, that's like a second interview question. That's, or that's when they give you a proposal and you know, when they decide they wanna hire you, that's when you talk about these things. So at the first interview, that shouldn't really be brought up. Um, if you don't have like an idea about it from the listing, just, just wait, just wait. Um, that will definitely come up before you're hired. There's no way you're going to get hired and you're not going to know what you're getting paid. So don't worry, it's coming. Just try to be patient. Um, oh, yes, this last one, talking negatively or criticizing previous roles and employers. Oh, my gosh, this one is more popular than you would think. Um, so if I, if I have someone in front of me and they're, they're venting to me about their last place and how they were terrible managers and terrible this and awful this, the first thing that comes in my head is, okay, so if I hire you, you're going to be sitting here saying these same things about me and the rest of the management team. So, I mean, we all have worked in places where maybe management or your, your boss isn't, uh, you know, a walk in the park, but you definitely don't need to bring that up. And, you know, that shouldn't be your number one focus on why you left a job. You want to, you know, you could say, oh, you know, me and my boss didn't really see eye to eye. That That's something that's okay. But when you're here, like, oh, my boss was awful. I couldn't stand one more day working with them. That's a major red flag for me. And that, that scares me. Okay. <laughs> Cause I'm always thinking uh, you're going to be saying the same thing about me and you know, my team. So I don't know if I want to sign up for this. All right, so we have reached the end. Thank you so much for joining me. Uh, now I'm going to open up the floor. If you guys have any questions about anything, please feel free to ask. If you want any topics at all, we got some time here. So you could write in the chat or you could take off your, your you can put on your mic, whatever you want to do. Amy, while we're waiting for some questions, um, what, what, how do you want an interviewee to follow up with you? Okay, that's great. So I think for me, I would like a phone call. I just feel like phone calls are like the like the fastest. I know it, it's a preference. It depends who it is. Some organizations like emails, if you have a direct email for that specific person who interviewed you, you could definitely shoot them an email. But I'd say if you had like a generic email where it's just like the whole entire, I would, in that case, I'd rather do a phone call and just say, hey, you know, this is Amy. I'm just following up. I, you know, I met with you last week. Thank you so much for meeting with me. I was just wondering where you're at with the interview process are you still you know have you have you just made a decision yet or you know what however you want to say that's how I would follow up but make it very casual and don't call once like don't keep calling like I have people who keep calling and calling and calling I'm like okay like it's a little bit much you're coming off a little strong you're freaking me out so yeah <laughs> and do so you want like an immediate time oh I'm, I'm sorry, sorry. I just wanted to know what's an appropriate time frame before you making that call after the interview. 
I would give them at least a few days. Like it depends on the day of the week. So be mindful of weekends. So Saturdays and Sundays don't count. So if I have a Thursday interview, um, you know, I would probably give them until Wednesday. Whereas if I had a Monday interview, I'd probably call on Friday, but just always know that like weekends don't count. They're probably not in the office. I wouldn't, they're not doing anything in the hiring process. So if you have an interview Friday, you call Monday, like there really not much has changed in that time period. So just give them a little more time. Yeah. And, and um, Julia, we'll get, I'll get to your question in a sec. Um, do you want like an, a quick little thank you email afterwards as well? I mean, you could, if you really, really are interested in this position and you want to stand out, I think it's very, it's a nice gesture, you know, it, it's, I mean, it can't be bad. So absolutely. A, a thank you little email would be nice. Just a simple thank you, not asking for anything, not inquiring about anything, just simply saying, thank you so much for taking the time today. I really enjoyed our talk and I hope to hear from you again. Something short and sweet like that is really nice. Thank you. And I'm going to read a question from the chat. Um, okay. So can you go over the specifics of salary negotiation? So I know this, we're not talking that as a whole, but just coming from yourself on yeah. the hiring manager side, do you have any tips or recommendations for salary negotiation? Yeah, definitely. Here, I'll talk about what I, cause I actually negotiated my salary. So I, um, you know, first of all, you want to go on Glassdoor or go online and you want to have a really realistic idea of the frame, the pay frame for this position. So Glassdoor is awesome because it'll show you the range in your area for your position of what people are getting paid. So let's say they're getting paid between 50 and 60,000 for an entry level position. So you definitely want to know that before you go to talk to anyone about it. Um, and then, you know, they'll, it depends what they say to you. Sometimes they'll ask you, hey, so, you know, what number are you looking for? And if that's the case, so I'm not going to ask for the highest. I'm definitely not going to ask for the lowest. So if they say the range is 50 to 60, I'll probably be like mm, 56. And like, I'm interested. I'll be looking at 56. So that's how you negotiate from there. Um, you definitely want to go a little higher and with the understanding that they're going to go a little lower and you're going to meet somewhere in the middle. That's usually how it goes. Um, but that's when they ask you for a number. Now, if it's a different situation where they just come and they tell you, hey, listen, so we're thinking about $40,000 a year. And you know in your mind that the proper range is 50, to, you know, 40 to 50 or 50 to 60. I'll be like, oh, you know, um, so actually I was looking to get something a little higher. You know, I know uh, after doing some research, similar pay for that is around X, Y, Z. You also want to bring up other things. Like for me, I brought up, the tolls that I will pay to um, work at this position because I live in Rockland and I work in Yonkers. So I brought that up and I said, hey, you know, so I am gonna have to commute 30 miles a day. Um, there is a toll involved and they're actually increasing the amount they say by, Back then they were saying it was gonna be $20 by 2021. This was a few years ago. So I brought that up and I negotiated that and they did come up a little bit. So, I mean, you gotta think outside the box. You gotta think, um, but be realistic. Don't come in there like making demands, asking for ridiculous numbers because they might just based on that alone be like, okay, you know what? You know, this, this person's clearly not being realistic. I don't think I wanna move forward. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great answer. And yeah. um, I think like, you know, Julie, I know you're asking, like, how do you ask and not sound rude? I think the more that you've researched to back yourself up and you've done the research and you've seen the range and you know the experiences level, then you can't, like, you're not, you know, you're just being honest. Like, you're just saying, like, this is the range that I've been seeing in my research. Um, how do we get to this range? And, you know, you're kind of looking at the pay and the benefits. Um, but yeah, and I see that there's another question. Um, so as an interviewee, why wouldn't you start at the highest end of a realistic salary range with your expectations of if they're going to come lower? So you can do that. So it all just depends. Like I said, it's a very competitive market and you don't want to go in there and just be asking for something that's way too high because that could just completely throw them off. Um, you want to be realistic. You do want to go a little high. You definitely don't want to go the lowest, but I wouldn't go the cap. It's a, everything that depends on your experience. If this is a position that you are experienced in, you've been working a similar position for the past five years, you have a degree in this exact, that's a different story. If that's the case, yeah, I might feel comfortable walking in and asking for the max, but if I'm a fresh out of college, I really don't have relevant experience. You know, you have to just be mindful, just be realistic with the situation, be realistic with, you know, your background and your knowledge. And, you know, that'll tell you if you can ask for the max, yeah. 
Yeah, we um, would have um, AAUW has come and done a salary negotiation workshop. Um, and they talk about like, kind of like assessing your value as well. So understanding like exactly like your experience, um, what value you have to bring, where you are, you know. Um, and yeah, they also would recommend kind of going that higher end, but not the highest of the range too. It's also very important because I think at Glassdoor too, salary.com, like putting the location as to where you are going to work. Um, there's other questions in the chat, but Darcel, did you have a question? I did. I just wanted to know in your experience, do you find that most people don't attempt to negotiate their salaries? Oh, it really just depends. I think people who don't feel comfortable and maybe they don't have a realistic like idea of the range, they might just go for whatever is put in front of them. And it's really unfortunate because once you agree in that number, that's that's your number, you know. And you know, I've seen situations with people doing the same position, and then you know, you're not supposed to talk about this, but they'll talk about how much they started at. One person started at 60, one person started at you know, 50. And then, you know, they're like, oh my gosh, like, I don't understand. And they become all upset. So you really, it's so important that you under, like you do your research, you understand what's a realistic uh, amount to be paid because once you agree on that number, that's your number. And, you know, it's going to be really unfortunate if you find out you're getting paid the lowest for the same position. So, you know, know your worth. <laughs> yeah. Any other questions? Feel free to put it in the chat mm -hmm. or off mic. Yeah, guys, and my last point is just you really want to be yourself overall. You want to come off as a very genuine person. We all bring something to the table here, just in our personalities alone. So just try not to become so nervous, you know, about everything that you kind of just like get all quiet and like awkward. Like you want to feel comfortable. You want to be yourself. You want to show your personality. And that alone could, you know, get you hired, just being yourself. And there are people willing to take chances on people with no experience just because they love their personality and they love their go-getter they could tell and they could just tell listen i'm going to give this person a chance and even though they have no they have no background in this and that's some of the most successful people so it's not all about your background it's not all about your resume it's about you and being comfortable and being genuine and just showing what you bring to the table showing them the kind of you know things that you can bring to the company yeah thank you yes. <laughs> are there any other questions um i have one, but I'm not sure. If, well, another one. Um, I'm not sure if this was said earlier in the presentation. I had to come in late. But um, what is your experience with appropriateness of dressing to the max of business attire versus business casual? Um, and I know that I, I'm in healthcare right now. Um, I went to an interview once where it, I felt weird walking in in a suit, but I did it anyway. Um, so, uh, yeah. Yeah, so you should really just dress for whatever the position is. So I know you're in healthcare, you're saying, so I'm assuming you wear scrubs normally. Um, so you just want to, you can't overdress like, listen, like I can't see them being upset if someone's overdressed. I mean, that's a compliment that that's showing me like, listen, you really taking this seriously. So I, I don't think you can ever overdress, but you can definitely underdress. So I like to do like what I'm wearing now. This is something similar that I would wear to an interview. It's, it's business casual, but to, to answer your question, I don't think there's such a thing as overdressing, you know, you dress as much, dress up as much as you'd like, but do try to dress for the position. That's that's the ideal, just try to, whatever you would wear on a normal basis there, that kind of level, that's what I would wear. Yeah, and I think like certain jobs give you a bit more flexibility with like, so for example, like healthcare, even if you wanna go into an interview with more of a traditional like jacket suit, but you have a, it's not, right, you have a bit more flexibility with like, you know, color and not being like a matching suit or, or wearing like, a sweater set and so you know like there's there's different um you know i think depending on the industry there's just you know you can there's more a broad spectrum of what that more like business casual towards business could be too um but yeah i agree like i don't think you know we will often tell students like there's nothing wrong with ever wearing us you know like for most positions 
wearing a suit, but it's also being mindful. We've actually, you know, there's been interviews where people have been told like what basically saying like, we're not formal, we're business casual. <laughs> um, so, and then Glassdoor, I mean, I know they talk a bit more about the interview questions, but they have, I've seen information there too, people talking about like what they wore too. Yeah, Glassdoor is a great resource for all these questions. They, they're like my number one resource before I go on an interview, I'm going to Glassdoor. I'm seeing what people are saying about who worked for this position. I'm seeing the salary range, I'm seeing everything. You know, I think it's a really nice realistic view of what it's like to work for that company. Yeah. Any more questions or are we gonna wrap it up? So what I could do now is I'm going to stop the recording. Um, and then if anyone had had a question that they didn't wanna ask in the recording, we'll stay on for a few minutes. But before I do that, I just really wanna thank everyone for coming and thank you, Amy, so much for a wonderful presentation. Um, and you know, if anyone has any questions, please, you can always reach out to the Career Development Center, career.development at purchase.edu. So thank you so much. Thank you, Jess.